What's up everybody and uh, welcome back to the channel. You're probably wondering why is the telehandler here? You guys have already built the structure. I don't see why you didn't have it here initially. Well, initially I wasn't going to bring the telehandler because the Kubota skid loader with that teleboom is perfectly capable of setting the trusses and walls on a building like this. Heck, we've used it in the past to set 66 foot wide double trusses on top of a 16 foot wall so it's pretty capable however we realized that because this building has standing seam roof we're going to need to put roof sheathing up there 5 8 sheathing there's no way that greg and i are gonna manhandle that up there one sheet at a time or even you know manhandle them up into the scissor lift and take them up maybe 10 15 at a time so decided to bring the telehandler so now we can get going today i think we're going to try to work on our overhangs get going on the roof sheathing, see where it goes, I don't know. Maybe we'll finish up the front wall where we've got this doorway. We're gonna leave it open for the concrete guy for the most part, but I still think we're gonna put some of the columns uh, just so we can kind of wrap up that detail and have a little bit of added strength. We better get into it because the sun is out and it's gonna start warming up. Look at that, we've got a delivery and it is our metal roofing. This is gonna be image two from Metal Sales. That's our metal supplier. And what's unique about this is there's gonna be zero fasteners through this roof, as well as zero fasteners through our trim details. So definitely if this is something you're gonna be doing in the future, you wanna stay tuned because I'll try to go over as much of that as possible. I'll give you a sneak peek of what this looks like. So there you go. It's uh, pretty cool stuff. It's going to install on top of our roof decking and get screwed to it with these little slots and it can move around. So the, the deal with a standing seam roof is that, well, at least this standing seam, you can get a structural standing seam roof. Um, this is non-structural, which means it does not provide the necessary diaphragm strength, the shear strength uh, that we need in our post frame. So we have to sheathe this roof with, um, we're gonna use 5 8 OSB. You could use a half inch plywood, I just think that you get a better job out of an engineered product and half inch OSB 716, that's not quite enough for the screws to really grab. So uh, we go with a 5 8 inch and uh, yeah, it's more work, it's heavier, it's more expensive, but it's gonna give a lot better product, I think, looking on this standing seam because there's a lot of flat material to these panels and if it doesn't lay right, if it doesn't look good, you're gonna see it in what I call oil can, or not I call, that's what the industry calls it. So um, that'll happen in a little bit. It's not gonna happen today. We got a lot of work to do. So I just wanted to share with you that our image two standing seam just showed up, which I'm excited about, but we gotta get back to installing these walls, getting our overhangs on, and then we can sheet the, ro the roof with some OSB and start talking about roofing, but that's gonna probably be a couple days. Now that all the walls are up, you can really start to get a picture of what this building's gonna look like. The shape of it obviously is gonna change when we start adding the porches, the overhangs, we start framing out windows, but that all takes time. This is the, what I always call the instant gratification phase. It goes pretty quickly. There's a lot of physical hard work, but it goes really quick. So now we have to start doing our detail work. We're gonna go ahead and get set up to do uh, our overhangs, we're gonna make those up, get those uh, put on the building, and we do that by using a tail. We just cut a two by four down to size. That gives us our two foot overhang. And then obviously we gotta install our subfascia. And then some other miscellaneous framing is also installed to help complete the roof structure so we can start putting our sheathing on. Like it? 
had it perfect, but then you, you moved it. Oh, I'm sure, dude. You were... Wait, 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 wait. This shouldn't be here. This guy get cut off. Mm -hmm. On that one. Yeah. That doesn't get screwed there. No, that means that tail can't go there. Nope. So what we're doing here is this is where the start of the porch, the two-story porch, is going to tie in to this upper roof section. And we don't want the fascia to go through. The fascias will die in and be at the same level both on the porch and the main structure. Uh, but then the valley is going to go up. We don't want to run these tails. We want to keep this space open. That's why it's going to look a little bit weird for right now. Okay, you got that marked? Yeah, I got it marked. It's all behind you. All right, I'm marked. So well, bu our building's moving, bro. Our no, it's moving. not the building. Don't worry. It's just the lifts move. like that. That was a front cloud right there. Yeah. Yeah, that's front cloud right there. Make sure you're straight. Yeah. Well, we're in another hurry because we've got another round of afternoon storms pushing through. We got a cold front. The wind is definitely blowing up in the trees and it's starting to sprinkle a little bit. So we need to hurry up. Maybe we'll get this last section of end wall fascia done. We've got the other three walls of overhangs completed. And uh, if we can get this one done, great. If not, that's what we'll do tomorrow. But then we're gonna be ready to start straightening out this building entirely so we can start running the roof sheathing. Remember, it is important to spend time on the straightening process because it makes everything go much easier, especially when you're running a ton of roof sheathing on a roof section uh, that if it's out of square, your sheets are gonna get jagged. Just It's all bad and especially when you move on to the steel stage, you want to be able to lay that out and it to run perfectly straight. So uh, we're gonna get everything cleaned up and if we can, keep going on this fascia. All right, we tried. We tried to finish this, but I'm not gonna get rained on. Mostly, because I don't want my tools getting rained on. You got anything else? Here, take this and I'll take this box. Okay. So we're out of here. We can go ahead and finish this tomorrow. No big deal. Take us 20 minutes and then uh, 20 minutes of work and then we'll be on to straightening out, getting roof sheathing going, so. We're going to start uh, installing this roof sheathing. We've got a lot of 5 8 roof sheathing for me and Greg to uh, sling up on the roof. Thankfully, we've got the telehandler here, and uh, Greg just got done making sure that all four corners of the building were plumb and everything was uh, ready to go. And now we're going to go up there and get a string line on our first eave wall so that we can make sure that it's perfectly straight as long as our corners are plumb and our wall is straight, uh, we will be able to check for square. And once it's square, then we can start installing the roof sheathing. Okay guys, this is uh, for all of you out there that have been following along for a long time. We do our best to make things perfectly straight. Um, and if, let's say we had a customer show up and look at our building, it hasn't been straightened yet. 
Uh, but we just got done putting this string line right here on our fascia so that we can check it for straight. And I don't know if I'll be able to capture this or not. Oh yeah, I think I think you can see. Like that's really bad. This fascia is no good. Our building is not straight at all because we have all those chains throughout the building here that are pulling it in a way that we don't want it to at this point. We just put them up to secure it for those heavy winds we had the other day. But now that we have that string line up, we can go and push and pull those chains and put the building exactly where we want it so that that fascia is as straight as possible. Yeah, you're about a quarter to three eighths. You got about three sixteenths, eight. Dude, you're there. Now let's uh, go ahead and, okay, this one, man, I think when we pull this, that's going to be perfect. So as you can see, it's a little bit of micro adjusting, but we want to make sure that at every one of these tail locations that we're exactly to this string line. We don't really care about what happens in between. The board could have a little bit of a swoop to it, and that's okay because we'll fix that when we actually put our roof sheathing on. We just want to ensure that it's straight right here. Okay, guys, for the sake of this video, I don't want to bore all of you out there because I've gone through, uh, we've taken this step-by-step -step process and turned it into a video. It's on the channel. I'll try to go ahead and put a link to it over here in the corner. So go check that out if you're interested in the full in-depth process of straightening, plumbing, squaring up a building and prepping it for your roof sheathing. But we're gonna go ahead and just get this done and we'll be back as soon as we're ready to start installing the 5.8 OSB. You gonna go there and mark four foot? Do you want my chalk line? Do you tape measure too? Where's your tape measure? It's my other pile. Well, that ain't gonna work. Here. Oh, the chalk. So we're gonna go ahead and mark four foot, snap a line, that way our sheathing can start um, straight. We know that our peak is square because we've already checked that. Now, what we don't know and we can't guarantee is that the end fascia is perfectly straight. We eyeballed it straight. Now what we'll do is once we snap this line and put our sheathing, any inconsistencies we can take out by pushing and pulling with a little bit of leverage. And then that should give us as straight a fascia as it does our snap line. Okay? Yeah. Good. Whenever you're ready. All right. That's pretty good. Can I get my tape measure back? Can I come over? Yeah. You gonna catch it? Uh, no. Oh, okay. At least you were honest with me. Now, run nails on your top. Run oh. nails on your top. Just your top. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Run them down here and I'm gonna grab another sheet. Run them down where? Run down this edge. Down the edge? Just the edge, okay, yeah. Okay, so you look good on the edge then. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay. You got it? Hold up. Alright, it's all you. So, I don't know, oh Jesus. That might be kind of confusing what we just did because it's not typical for your standard stud frame truss construction two foot on center because your trusses are running like this on most buildings. However, with post frame, our purlins are running horizontal. So we run our sheathing vertical. But that also means it's a little bit harder to get that first row started because with a traditional two foot on center, rafter or truss you can make sure that your your fascia is straight then we would just measure up four foot snap a line all the way across and that's what we would run our sheathing at we're kind of doing the same thing but we're doing it on our end wall and the end wall is not perfectly straight because we didn't snap it with a line and cut our tails to perfection um, 
not that it's not good. I mean, if you look at it now, it looks really good. It just is a little bit more work to get started. But now that we have a straight line, we can go to town. So you're nailing the top when you get it where you oh, like on, it. Oh, don't, don't. I got it. If you like that corner, go ahead and get it and, and then go down the side. That's it. Since the tails of our trusses are all in that string line, we can mark the bottom of these sheets with a snap line from the tails and then cut it with the track saw, getting a perfect straight line. So now we can nail our fascia right in plain with the face of the plywood, which uh, was cut perfectly with the track saw, giving us a nice clean fascia line. That is a long day. That's a hard day. Uh, a lot of physical work. Just two guys and all those uh, sheets of 5.8 OSB up the roof. Uh, definitely, it's a lot of work. I feel tired, but gratifying as well. That's what I love about carpentry construction. What we do is that we get to see the fruits of our hard work. And behind me there, we've got a half of the roof sheathed and ready to go. It looks really nice. It's straight. It's flat. It's going to be perfect for that standing seam metal roof that's coming next so tomorrow we'll get here we'll finish the other side of sheathing and then we'll start doing our preparatory work for a roof we might hold off till next week since tomorrow's friday we don't want to jump the gun uh, but we do have other stuff we can do anyway we've got some permanent bracing to do we've got grade board that can be done we've got soffit fascia that we can start doing so we've got a lot of work to do before we get to that metal roof but i'm excited i hope you guys are and if that's something that you guys want to see make sure that if you are subscribed you also have that bell uh smashed on so you don't miss any future videos and we'll catch you guys in the next one